Hello world and welcome to Style Amplified. I'm your host, Giazzi Williams, and today we have the pleasure of sitting down with Karen Cooper, a natural, holistic, consultant, and raw food coach. Karen is also the founder and owner of Guru Raw Food for Life, which provides health assessments as well as raw vegan food planning as well as coaching. Karen, it's a pleasure. Thanks for coming on Style Amplified today. Thanks for having me. So Karen, for the people out in the Style Amplified world who aren't familiar with you, can you tell us a little bit about who is Karen Cooper? And tell us a little bit about your journey that's brought you to this point of being a raw vegan food coach. Well, how I got my journey is by looking at all the sick people in the world and I didn't want to become one of them. Okay. So that led me to the raw food journey. But I am everyone's sister, mother, and friend. Cool. <laughs> Did that answer your question? That answered my question perfectly. Okay. I got a few more actually. Okay. <laughs> Guru Raw Food for Life, very interesting name by the way. I like it, it sticks. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the business, maybe where the name came from, as well as what are some of the things you're offering specifically to the people out there? I came up with the name because when I'm talking to my clients, I'm very raw. I tell them the truth. Okay. So that's how I came up with Guru Raw, because <laughs> I do everything in the raw, you know. Okay. And most people, they can only hear you when you are talking to them in the way that maybe uh, like a family member, someone who really cares about right. you. So that's really why. An honest approach. Yes, an honest approach. That always approach. makes the ears open up a little bit more. Yes. And cool. here at Guru what we do, since you wanted to know some of the things that we do, right. um, we grocery shop for you, we pantry clean out, oh, wow. we go walking with you. We, do every, we try to do everything as a group because once you, I find that when people are uh, group together, they do things longer. Um, you don't give up. Uh, you don't stop. You don't start the diet, then stop when you're, you know, committed to other people. True. Yes. But if you're an individual and you do it, you'll stop. You'll backslide. You'll go back to eating as much processed food as you can. Right. So that's really why I'm, uh, Guru exists to help the community, to help our people. Wow. So we need to talk after this interview mm -hmm. because I have a pantry and a refrigerator <laughs> that I would love for you to. Restock. Arrange through and yeah, and be raw with me. Oh, okay. But <laughs> well, I would love to help. <laughs> great, great, great. <laughs> so, Karen, we got your background. We got the name Guru Raw, what it means in you being honest. But these days, you see a lot of people are going vegan. It's all the rage. But what are some of the mistakes that you're seeing people are making when they try vegan food or the vegan lifestyle? Well, what I do see is a lot of people that go vegan they're having too much starch. Okay. They don't know how to really combine their foods properly. They're eating a lot of processed foods when they change their diet because they go from eating junk food, pro junk for processed food to eating organic processed foods, okay. vegan processed food. But all of it is still junk if you don't go to the raw food because raw is what cleans and heals your inner organs. Wow. Right, yes, it's a difference. And at Guru Raw, what we do is we try to heal you from the insides with just green leafy vegetables. It's really not so much about these fancy meals because most of, most of those fancy vegan meals aren't mm -hmm. good for you. And, and that's why some people are still fat, that they're still not losing the weight as fast. I never knew that. Yes. So with that being said, also speak a little bit about some of the benefits. If you're doing the right way of eating vegan, the green leafy, healing from the inside and out, and um, sort of what Gura is doing and providing to people who want that lifestyle, what are some of the benefits someone can see um, if they're eating the right way and doing it correctly? Well, if you're eating the right way and doing it correctly, every organ in your body is renewed. Um, yes, every organ in your body is renewed and you can feel it, your brain, your, your um, heart, your liver, your lungs, kidney, all of these things. So um, what I do recommend is that most people look on the internet, get some books, you know, really do the research for yourself because no one's going to take care of you. You have to take care of yourself, so you have to learn to take care of yourself. And remember that food is medicine. So if you know that food is medicine and raw leafy green vegetables has chlorophyll in it and that's what's healing for the body, it's a no-brainer. Wow, wow. That makes perfect sense, actually, and from the inside out. So it's a long-term fix to somebody's needs. You're not just coming in and saying, eat this and eat this. You're dealing with them in totality. 
so yes, to speak. Yes, yes. I never just tell people to come in and we see you the one time. I try to make it like you're my family. Okay. Because I know I'm a, we're an extension of each other. We're trying here. We're here to help each other to live happy ex and a happy existence. Okay. You know, and. I'm, I mean, I should be making more money at this, I must tell you, <laughs> tell you that, but I'm not because I give everything away for free. Wow, like okay. The, like the lectures that we do, uh -huh. that's all for free because I know that if I charge, people won't come. Wow, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you're hearing it first, Style Amplify, folks. This is your family member, your cousin, your <laughs> sister, your auntie, your girl from next door and around the way. I appreciate the, uh, the answer to the question. All right, so Karen. Now that we got a lot of the background out the way, let's answer some real nitty gritty questions. When we were preparing for this interview, a lot of the style people that were writing to us or a lot of the people we would meet, um, when it seems like there's a few misconceptions. Uh, when people say the word vegan, they think that you're gonna be eating pebbles off the street and small grapes and these rations and you're gonna be this hungry frail person. Can you speak to a little bit about the misconceptions that people have about being vegan? As well as answer a few questions on the physical side. A lot of people have the pushback of women saying, you know, I don't want to lose my curves. And a lot of men say, you know, I don't want to swim in my t-shirts. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that a little bit for us? Some of the misconceptions, I guess, with the diet is that people are just eating and they're always looking for the next meal. So okay. if they're not going to eat junk foods, they're going to go and eat look for a vegan junk food. I'm trying to get people to actually stop eating. Oh, we're, wow. we're eating ourselves to death is mm. what we're doing. And you, I can't really reteach people how to eat if I don't live with them really because they're always going to backslide. That's how I know, that's why I know that a lot of people do it. And so it's I not say, about perfection? No, and not, okay. you don't have to be perfect in this. This is all set up just for you. Okay. You know, it's like once we get wind of learning about raw food or whatever we're learning about, it's like everybody gets on the bandwagon. You know what I mean? Right, now right. we're all following the leader of the guru, the guru. We're following her now. And so <laughs> we want to do everything perfect like this person when it only works for my body. How I eat works for me. Right. How you eat works for you. And I don't mean you have to eat junk foods. Mm -hmm. you, may, you, may, you may need 50% raw and 50% cooked. Okay. The misconceptions about the food Mm -hmm. is that people really need to stop eating because all they think about is food, food, food. Right. Okay? Well, when you eat vegan food, most people who are vegans are unhealthy. There are a lot of unhealthy vegans because they're, um, they eat a lot of starch. Wow. Yes, they eat a lot of starch, which turns into sugar. Mm -hmm. And um, in the raw world, you just eat a lot of, you can, you can make like pizzas, lasagnas, um, you can have all sorts of salads, fruit salads, mock tunas, um, anything, anything that you can prepare cooked, okay. you can prepare raw. Really? Anything, yes. Anything. So if I say I want to be a vegan, I don't necessarily have to starve myself to do it. You never have to starve. Wow. Okay. Okay. You would never think of a vegan as being an unhealthy person. No, but you, there are. There are plenty unhealthy people. Just because people can hear the word vegan and they can watch TV mm -hmm. or they can pick up a book, uh, it doesn't as necessarily mean that that diet is for you. Because sometimes raw isn't for everyone. Really? Yes. Raw is not for everyone. Some people's stomachs just can't take it. They don't okay. digest it very well. So that's when they, when I find someone who's, who can't handle raw foods, mm -hmm. I tell them to have steamed. Just steam to steam food. their vegetables. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hmm. So there are alternatives for somebody. So there's not a person that can miss by incorporating some of these principles with Gura into their diet and their daily life. There's a way around any misconception to making it work for them, yes. so to speak. Yes, there is. You can be happy and healthy at the same time. They're not separate. No, they're not. <laughs> Contrary to what, you know, a lot right. of people might say. You can be say. happy and healthy at the same time. I'm living proof of it. I've been living this way, this diet for pretty much my entire life. And not the raw, but the, the vegetarian meal, the vegetarian okay. diet. Yes. So, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, but with choosing this diet, because this is a question I have to ask you, because we got this question, and this may be the biggest misconception, so I wanted to sit at your front door and let you answer it. A lot of women, a lot of men, will have issues with the physical side of it. A lot of women, women would say, so to speak, I don't want to lose my curves. I don't want my body to change. You know, they still want to fill out those genes. Yeah, yeah. And men still want to look healthy and in shape and 
be able to take their shirt off on the beach, so to speak. But they feel some of them feel that the vegan diet doesn't do that for them. Can you answer that question? Yes. Well, most people don't really know what they look like because they're eating. They've eaten so much food that now they have big breasts, right. big behind, which is full of fat. <laughs> that a big booty is just fat. Don't tell me that. La, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> but really, it is. So once a woman starts to lose, or a man starts to lose the fat, okay. then you really see what you really look like. Oh, wow. And it doesn't mean that you don't you don't get some exercise in, like some walking or some bike riding. You don't even have to lift weights. Uh, I don't lift weights. I don't really work out that much. I bike ride and I walk. That's all okay. I do. A lot of people think I work out and everything to keep my body. No, I feed my organs very well. Wow, okay. Yes. So we're speaking to that, right? I heard somewhere about you that you operate based on an 80-20 rule. Can you tell us a little bit about that as well? Yes. Um, I eat 80% raw and 20% cooked. Okay. And uh, in, in my 80% raw, I mean, when I say that, I have like spinach, salads, um, raw drinks with dandelion. That's my favorite. Okay. And, um, and my 20% of cooked, which is my junk food that I still crave. <laughs> It's like black beans, um, what else, um, stuffing, I mean things, some, some of these <laughs> Give me things, one more, give me one more. One more thing that I love so much that's really bad for me, um, pasta. Really? Yeah, and I don't eat it very often, and, okay. and I know about quinoa pasta and all those things, but sometimes I just, when I'm out, they don't have quinoa pasta, so right. I'm eating with other people. True. So that is my 20% of bad foods. So do you find it hard, well let's say when you are out, because you know, what you mentioned earlier about going in and helping them make better choices and cleaning out their junk. Of course, we're not always in our own home and in our four walls. If I'm someone who's sociable, I may go out to eat with my coworkers or I may go out with my friends. What are some of the tips that you provide for them to make better choices when they're outside of their home? Well, um, what I do when I go out to eat with friends and family, okay. I'll order like a double salad or okay. double broccoli, you mm -hmm. know, or baked potato, no butter or anything on it. You just order all the vegetables and order double and you will get full. And But before you have your meal or, let, well, I'll say that after your meal, about maybe 20, 15 minutes, whatever, mm -hmm. drink you a full glass of water and you will be completely full. So I will never have that starving feeling never. by being a vegan. Well, you won't have that feeling because what you're doing when you change your diet is you're feeding your organs and you're okay. giving them vitamins. You're feeding them the nutrients that it needs. And when it's like when you eat the cooked foods, you stay, you're hungry. You're constantly hungry, so you have to have a big plate, breakfast, mm -hmm. lunch, and dinner. But when you feed your body nutrients, you're, you, don't, you don't need much food. You've, com you're, you've um, completed... I don't know. I don't know what I was trying to say, but you're fine. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll be okay. Yeah. Even a man my size would be okay being yes. a vegan. Yes. Even a man your size. Okay. So you would help me choose what my percentages need to be. Well, I can't help you choose what your percentage is going to be. You're going to do that. Okay. And the way that you do that is you'll, you'll have a schedule, like, pretty much. And you'll write down everything that you've eaten for breakfast eating for breakfast. Okay. Then you'll do it for lunch and then you'll do it for dinner. And that way you'll see how much cooked food you're eating and you'll figure out your own percentage of which you, how much junk are you putting in your body <laughs> right, and how right. much good stuff are you not putting in your body. Then you'll come up with your own percentage. Cool. It's your organ, it's your heart, your liver, your lungs, and your kidney. You should care more, not me. I think you just got raw with me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why they call me Guru. Guru. Yeah. Cool. That's, that is great information. Mm -hmm. I really Thank love you. it. So, let's bring it on you because we're talking and we're interviewing you today. So what's in Karen's fridge that you eat on a daily that you feel works best for you day in and day out? Well, every single day of my life, I have some dandelion, coconut water, and I make a drink with that where I blend it, and it's so good. And I also add a little um, basil. And I, ha I don't think I told people that uh, at one of my last lectures, mm -hmm. but I would love for you to try that basil. It is so delicious. It gives it a whole different taste. Wow, okay. Another thing that I like to enjoy on a daily basis is um, cinnamon and ginger tea that I make myself. You use like one-fourth teaspoon of ginger and one-fourth teaspoon of cinnamon, and you mix it, and then you just drink it. Now, some people may like a little sweetener. Okay. You can add a little honey if you like, or you can add some um, agave, but I like to just have mine to drink it. It's like a laxative. It helps me go to the bathroom oh, okay. two or three times a day. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, smell. no smell. So, I heard you say uh, in an interview one time, or one of your lectures, that you talked about if you're doing the right things, and um, the laxative is what made me think of this with the tea uh, ingredients, that your excrements literally shouldn't stink. Is that true? That is correct. Oh, really? When your poop stinks, that means you are 
toxic and the poop that's in your body right now, you, you're loaded with food inside of your stomach right now. You're still full of crap. <laughs> so once it comes out, it's going to have an odor because it's been sitting in your body. It's just sitting there waiting to come out. But you're stuffing yours. You're constantly stuffing food in to keep it in instead of the green leafy vegetables, which you need okay. to relieve yourself. Wow. So when Gura comes into my house and she points at me and tells me I'm full of crap, she literally means it. I do. <laughs> and if I come to your house and tell you you're full of crap, you better get rid of it, believe me. You're going to make yourself sick. Really? Yes. So if I'm doing the right things, literally, my shit don't stink. Shit don't stink. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about was cost. You mentioned your 80-20 rule, right? And I don't want people to feel like to eat healthy is 80% in Whole Foods. And, you know, the other 20%, they outside because they can't pay their rent. Mm. So can you speak to a little bit about the cost of this lifestyle, either going raw or that vegan diet? Well, um, I wouldn't say that being vegan or raw is expensive if I had to compare it to being paying medical bills. I would rather pay for the vegan and raw food, 80, 20, whatever it is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, but what I want to talk to people about here is that you can grow your own vegetables. You can do things yourself. You don't mm. always have to go to a store. You don't always have to go to any other person but you, okay? okay? And there are um, community uh, plots in every city, in every state you have these. You have to do some research to find these people, to seek these people out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can get on Facebook, whatever, but there is somebody in your, in your state that's growing their own vegetables, and you need to get with that person. Or, been. yeah, they are, they're everywhere. In Washington, D.C., they have plenty of these things, and I know in Philadelphia, everywhere they have them. But most people don't understand or they don't care because they watch TV and they follow <laughs> that leader to Whole Foods, to Trader Joe's, or to wherever. And, okay. they, and, and you don't have to do that. But if that's the, the only alternative, then go there and buy your vegetables and only buy organic. And I know people think organics is costly, but no, medical bills, that's costly. This is true. Yeah, so <laughs> you, can, you can take your pick. Would you rather have pay medical bills or would you rather just buy some organic dandelion, which costs you about $4? I'm going to go with the dandelion. Good. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> because I also had some of those misconceptions as well. And you know, also, too, you know, it's easier to eat off the 99 cent menu for some people. But like you say, in the people that style, do you want to, you know, buy the leafy greens and the dandelions or do you want to be paying the medical bills? Look around at all the hospitals. Go visit some hospitals. Those same people you see in there, it could be you one day because they had a bad diet. They, they didn't make the changes soon enough. To make, to make a difference. Yes, to make a difference. Or maybe most of the people in the hospital, they were more concerned about the cost of raw foods. Now they're in the hospital. Right. You know? right, right. Because if you're just trying to heal your body, mm -hmm. vegetables are everywhere. In every grocery store, they're wow. everywhere. But if you're looking for more than that, if you're looking for junk food, which most people are, because you have all the intentions of eating a raw food diet, mm -hmm. but once you get into a grocery store and you see they have vegan this, organic this, that's when your mind just says, oh, I can still eat? I can right. eat junk? <laughs> Most young people need to really take some time out and go visit some of those places. Those people are sick for a reason. This is true. Yeah. So if someone can find what you're saying, the opportunities to find those areas in the community, that's their first option. And is their second option just making better decisions that they have to go to at Whole Foods or Trader Joe's, mainly focusing on the leafy? Uh, vegetables? Well, if you have to go to those places, I would only focus on the green leafy vegetables. And if you get some, I mean, uh, I guess you could find fruit like at a uh, uh, farmer's market and you can make you some juices, you know, uh, blended, of course. Okay. You know, you can go to the, try those places, but that's what I would do. Wow. Wow. That's a great suggestion. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So education is the key. Uh, to it, not just what you're reading in the book, but making sure you understand what's going on around you. Yes, making sure that. I agree. Thank you for that. All right, so we got cost out the way. So I know this lifestyle would fit in most people's budgets, everyone's budget. Mm -hmm. So we're going to change things up just a little bit. And so we always would like to know from everybody, for the people at home with Style Amplified, whether it's your fashion, whether it's your style, your vibe, the way you carry yourself when you walk into a room. Mm -hmm. Our model with Style Amplified is everyday people, everyday life with style. So can you tell us a little bit about your own personal style? 
Well, I guess I like to consider myself naturally chic. I like that. <laughs> you know, because I'm a natural person. I like, as you can see, I picked this dress because uh -huh. it had the natural tones, earth tones, but it's kind of soft and classy. You know, at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, can you tell us a little bit as well about what the style means to you? Well, style, I guess, means to me that. It's something that's individual, I guess. It's, uh, I really can't answer that question because I really don't know how. You know what's funny is we get that a lot, and I always say it's that one thing you can't put your finger on, yeah. but you know it's there. Yeah. It's kind of that moving target because, of course, even all of us, our style changes over the years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Was this the outfit you had on in 20? Or no, was that I had a little makeup on. I was fully made up, Ooh. short hair, perm. <laughs> You wouldn't recognize me. I wouldn't recognize you. <laughs> no. But you know, that just speaks to how style is just so evolved. Yeah. And that's yeah. why we always say everyday people, everyday life with style. I like that. That's cool, right? <laughs> so Karen, we here at Style Amplified just want to take the time to say thank you for sitting down with us with your very, very busy schedule. I really enjoyed a lot of the information you shared and I know the people at home did as well with all the tips you provided. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to implement some of those personally. So my you know what needs to be what it needs to be. But we'll get on that on another topic. But also to just uh, give the people out there how they can get in touch with you or how they can get your services and do business with Guru. Okay. I can be reached at 757-342-2285 or you can contact me on Facebook at Guru Food for Life or you can email me at truthoughts.com. Well, there you have it, world. That concludes this episode of Style Amplified. I'm your host, Giazi Williams. And again, always remember, everyday people, everyday life with a little bit of style.